Issue 156 We start out with Sonic ripping away a wanted poster of himself from a wall in the small universe, and he says it looks like he's wanted again, which is weird since this is the first time he was wanted in this place. I don't think his status ever changed. He says the princess really holds a grudge when, well, I guess what he did to piss her off was keep kids from being possessed by genies like they all wanted. Never mind. He, can, he wonders how he can get into her palace, and some civilians want to capture him for a reward, with one of them pointing out that there's no way the princess would actually give them a reward. For some reason, the people decide to go after Sonic anyways, despite no chance of being rewarded for it. And Sonic runs away, thinking they're just fanatics. He jumps onto the roof of the palace with a whole town of people trying to throw rocks at him. And then we see the fat princess three days later in the throne room, throwing something at a servant of hers, yelling at him for failure. She says that if Sonic's not in their dungeon by the end of the week, she'll put the servant there in his place. The princess asks to see her grand vizier. Somehow, Robotnik was hired as her new grand vizier, and she thinks he's a different person from Kindervor. Well, that sidesteps that problem for him. She says that she prefers his new look since he's larger than before and thus looks more manly. A servant comes in carrying a carpet or something while Eggman questions what he's doing here and then is revealed to be Sonic in disguise, he reveals himself right away. Maybe he would have been better off not revealing his disguise so easily and then wasting time talking to him considering that Eggman immediately zaps him saying he's captured him and knocks him out easily. Sonic wakes up in a cell and Grimer taunts him from the other end of it with some sort of microscope thing in his eye that looks like he's got a new ugly cyborg guy. Grimer says that the princess wants him to torture Sonic, but Eggman wants him to conduct experiments to discover the secret of his sonic speed. Didn't he already do that? I guess that's why the story about Amy foiling him trying to replicate the sonic speed experiment is not canon. Grimer then says he's found a way to do both at the same time, and he taunts Sonic about how he came here to look for the transportation belt to escape the small universe, and Grimer explains to Sonic about how well built the cell is. Why can't Sonic just barrel through the floor with his finesse to escape? Grimer's not mentioning anything about the floor. Sonic jumps at the bars to try to escape anyways, and gets zapped by an electrified force field, which Grimer hadn't told him about to make sure he'd get hurt by it. He says he's low on acid and decides to leave, which will probably be his downfall. The story ends with Sonic saying that his speed let him grab Grimer's keys so fast they didn't realize they were gone, meaning that there was a benefit to him stupidly jumping towards the cell bars after all. In the next story, after Amy says that Max Gamble couldn't rule anything well, they go through the Ring of Eternity to Mobius and realize that either the Snowy Mountain melted, or the ring's been moved to a grassy area. They get greeted in the Blueberry Hill Zone by Fabian the Bad Singer, who explains that his fans are sending him through the Ring of Eternity so that other worlds can enjoy his music. I'm sure it's not to get rid of him forever or anything. Amy says that Fabian doesn't realize how dangerous it would be to go in there, and Techno warns him about the danger. After Amy gets into a fight with the people who naturally think they're doing the right thing, and I really have to wonder how Fabian could have gotten to be such a successful singer at the start if his voice is that terrible, making the whole joke around him forced. Gamble is stopped from trying to run away because he's mistaken for one of the do-gooders by a villain. If this villain is trying to do the right thing by getting rid of Fabian, why would he call the hero such an obviously evil insult? Because he happened to be with the heroes at the time, the ape Mobian tries to punch him, and when he dodges it, the punch hits the Ring of Eternity, sending it falling down a hill and damaging it. I thought it was destroyed at that point, so I found it pretty satisfying to see since I've seen enough of Amy and Techno zone hopping. Techno says that the Ring of Eternity has magical power so they can rebuild it, and Amy tells Gamble that if he wants a reduced prison sentence, he better get to fixing it. How would he know how to fix it? Why would anyone think Amy could have that kind of legal power over sentencing? This causes the Ring of Eternity to get fixed, and fortunately I don't have much reason to be disappointed as he tells Amy and Techno that their journeys through time and space are over. So it's a win-win situation. He doesn't have to be destroyed for that story arc to conclude. The first story is by Nigel Kitching, and as Sonic had put in the palace dungeon in the small universe and swiped Grimer's keys so fast that he didn't even notice. I'm not sure how he did that though, since his hands should have been stopped by the electrified force field he clearly hit, which should have prevented him from going past the bars. And the second story is by Lou Stringer, and has the Ring of Eternity briefly get destroyed in a fight where people try to get rid of Fabian through it, only for it to get rebuilt, but fortunately the story arc ends anyway since it was really dragging on, and Max Gamble is hauled off to jail.